So we have already concluded that when we design raw decoders, we have to use the pre-decoder uh, final decoder architecture. When we do so, we always make the choice to make the final decoder as simple as possible and keep most of the complexity in the pre-decoder. And we also agreed that uh, when we design large fan-in NAND gates, as is the case, for example, in the pre-decoder, we're going to design them using small NAND gates, preferably to input NAND gates. This allows us to have a longer chain, and that longer chain opens up the possibility for optimizing total delay. And so uh, the first thing is we have, we keep most of the complexity in the pre-decoder, as is the case here. And secondly, if this is the pre-decoder, then the large fan in NAND gate, in this case, it's a four input, uh, it's an eight input NAND gate, is gonna be um, created using um, smaller NAND gates, in this case, using uh, two input NAND gates. So each NAND gate is always followed by an inverter because we want to use AND gates and we only have NAND gates available. And uh, in this case, we have a chain of two input NAND gates and inverters. This is the final decoder and all of them are driving the word line ultimately. Notice though that this section of wire is going to be running vertically. It's the output of the pre-decoder and uh, the input to the final decoder. And when we look at the chain of interest or a path of interest, that's going to be the path from either of the uh, input address bit line, bits to uh, the word line. So it's any of these paths. And fortunately, in this case, all of the paths in the decoder are symmetric. And so if you do optimization for one of these paths, you're going to end up with all of the other paths being optimized. So you basically have a chain of NAND gates and inverters. And this chain of NAND gates and inverters is driving a final large capacitor. And we know the size of the first gate, as that's always the case. And we just want to find out what are the sizes of the intermediate gates that uh, optimize total delay. In this case, total delay is actually T word line. And it's obvious why we broke down large NAND gates into smaller NAND gates, because that gives us more stages, and more stages gives us more ch choices about sizing that can have a great impact on total delay. Now, um, this is just a very simple uh, logical effort problem, and let's apply it to uh, an, um, a 16-input uh, NAND gate. So this is a 16 by 2 power 16 uh, row decoder. It's going to be uh, composed of uh, eight input pre-decoder AND gates and a final two input AND gate. The pre-decoder eight input AND gate is going to be uh, formed of uh, three two input AND gates uh, in series, which are composed of three two input NAND gates and three inverters. And so overall, we have um, uh, four two input NAND gates and we have four inverters in the chain. And they are driving the final capacitance, which is the word line capacitance. The uh, logical effort of a two input NAND gate is four over three. The logical effort of an inverter is unity. And therefore, the total chain logical effort is four over three to the power of four. The total electrical effort of the chain is the word line capacitance, which we are driving, divided by the input capacitance of the first NAND gate. Now, this allows us to find uh, the total effort of the chain F, which is equal to G times H, and then find the optimal stage uh, total effort, which is the eighth root, because we have eight stages, four of which are NAND gates and four are no inverters, and it's the uh, eighth root of the uh, total chain effort. Now, once we find the total, the stage optimal effort, we can find the uh, electrical efforts of the NAND gates and the inverters, and they are going to be different because the inverters, for the inverters, uh, electrical effort is equal to total effort because logical effort is equal to one, whereas the NAND gates are required to handle proportionately less electrical effort of the total chain effort. And uh, if we have an N times two to the power of N, uh, row decoder, we can actually generalize these results as uh, as shown here because we can find the number of uh, NAND gates and the number of inverters in terms of N. It's basically log base 2 N over 2 in the pre-decoder plus a single gate in the final decoder. And we can find an expression for uh, the, uh, for the uh, electrical effort of each. And also knowing the uh, parasitic delay of each of the 
of the stages, we can find an expression for total delay in the in, in the decoder, which is going to be um, the word line delay ultimately. Now, um, when we look at the, the result we got, there are two major assumptions we are make, making here, both of which are completely incorrect. The first assumption is that the word line is purely capacitive, that looking through here, we find a capacitive C wire, which is this, which allowed us to solve the uh, logical effort problem as we always did. Now, this is not true. We know that the word line uh, is always resistive in, in, in the majority of, of, of arrays because it is formed of polysilicon. Even in DRAMs where the word line can be metallic, um, due to the skin effect, we actually will observe a significant resistance. So we should actually represent this as a resistive wire. And if we represent it as a single pi section like this, then go back and, and view the video on um, on the design of uh, drive buffers for uh, bit lines. And you will find that when we have a resistive wire instead of a purely capacitive wire, this doesn't change anything about sizing for optimal delay. It just changes the value of optimal delay by adding a constant delay offset. And this constant delay offset is equal to C wire over two times R wire. And it, it is more or less the, um, uh, self-delay of the wire. And so, whereas this might look like a big deal, it really isn't. It doesn't change anything about uh, the sizes that we already obtained, and we can still use these results, except that we will have to contend with a somehow higher total delay, but that's unavoid unavoidable when we have resistance. So, the second major issue, the second major assumption we have made, and this time it's a big assumption with major ramifications is that we have ignored the capacitance of the column running between the pre-decoder and the final decoder. So in the pre-decoder, final decoder architecture, the pre-decoders provide pre-decoded lines that run the entire length of the memory. So they run as long as column, uh, as, bit, as long as bit lines run through the core. And so these wires are extremely long. They have a very large capacitance. And we have to assume that they are going to be lumped capacitive lines for now. So just ignore resistance. But there is a capacitance here. We'll call it C column. And it is the pre-decoder line capacitance. This pre-decoder line capacitance doesn't allow us to include this final AND gate with these initial AND gates in a single uh, chain, because it basically separates the two and it's kind of in the middle, and, and we have to deal with it. We have to find a way to deal with it. And so the chain that we are looking at is going to com be composed of the uh, NAND gates and the inverters in the pre-decoder. That's fine. But then there's going to be a large C column here that separates them from the final decoder. And then that final decoder is going to drive the uh, word line, and it's, we're just going to assume that it is a lumped capacitor for now. So, okay, that makes, uh, that makes the problem a little different, but how does it affect the solution? If we write the expression of total delay in this chain, this would be the expression. And we find that for the majority of terms, we are still using the same expression as we uh, would in a normal logical effort problem, uh, because for most of these stages, for most of the stages within the pre-decoder, nothing has changed. But starting with the penultimate stage in the entire decoder or the ultimate stage in the pre-decoder, things have to change because this guy is not now driving the input capacitance of this guy. This was the assumption we made when we obtained the previous results. Now it's driving the cap input capacitance of this guy plus the capacitance of the column. And so we have to write its capacitance, uh, its, uh, uh, its delay in detail. So its time constant is driving the uh, self capacitance, it's driving the input capacitance of the next stage, and it's driving the capacitance of the column. Um, now, it's also the final stage is driving its own capacitance and the capacitance of the wire. And so we can think of these terms probably as not very different from what we would have seen before, but it's these terms in the middle, and specifically this one that changes everything. So if we take these 
different terms and rearrange them, uh, and we just look at what we get in the end, then we find that it's actually very similar still. We have here parasitic delay, we have um, logical effort, and we have here sort of a um, an electrical effort, right? So it's CGN minus one plus C column over CGN minus two. That's the electrical effort of stage HN minus two. Now, there's a problem here, which is C column. So when we solved this previously, we didn't have C column, so there was only CGN minus one. So what's the problem with C column? The problem with C column is that it is unchangeable. It is not something we can control, like the gate capacitances of gates. The gate capacitances of gates, CGI or CGJ, is within our control. If we increase the size of a gate, we can increase its input capacitance. And this is the assumption upon which everything in the sizing problem is based, is that we can control both, both this and this. We can control the numerator and the denominator of any electrical effort within the chain, except for the very final electrical effort where we have the load capacitance, and therefore we cannot control the numerator, and that forms one of our boundary conditions. In this case, we have an, an, an intermediate boundary condition imposed by this C column. And so we don't have enough equations to solve here. If we assume that we have uh, equal um, total efforts for all of the stages, we don't have enough equations to solve. We have one more unknown. And meaning, if we take this expression of delay and we uh, differentiate with respect to gate capacitance, which is what we normally do in a logical effort problem, then we have to, um, we, we end up with not enough solutions because the conclusion that we get, which is that Fj is equal to Fj minus 1, is going to apply only to the interior of the chain and not to its final stage. And so at the final stage, we have to, you know, do a sp special minimization. We have to do our own differentiation and equ equ equating to zero. And so when we do this, it gives us another condition on the logical efforts and the total efforts of stage Hn minus 2 and Hn minus 3, which in which obviously C column is going to make an appearance. And so we can use this equation with the previous equation and solve them simultaneously and get a solution. Now, there's also a very approximate way we can solve this problem that works especially well when uh, column uh, capacitance is large. And that is to consider the pre-decoder a chain on its own and then to consider the final decoder a separate chain. Meaning we can optimize the pre-decoder just assuming that uh, the column capacitance is the entire load and ignore the input capacitance of the final Decoder. This is only going to be valid when the uh, final decoder is small relative to the pre-decoder column capacitance, which is true for large arrays. Once we have finished this, we obtain the value of output capacitance of this final uh, inverter plus this column decoder, and then these are the input capacitance of this final uh, NOT gate, and we can then perform optimization with it driving the wire, the entire wire. Again, we don't have enough stages in the final decoder to do optimization, so what we normally do is this inverter is then expanded into an inverter chain of its own that allows us to optimize the final delay of the final decoder.